Hi, welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam, and today I'm going to be unboxing the Dungeons and Dragons monster cards. And this is the challenge zero to five um, cards. There's another deck after this, but I figured I would get the first one to make sure I liked it first. Um, this is by uh, Gale Force Nine, which of course have done the um, spellbook cards, which I've used quite a bit, and the magic item cards I just recently got. Um, now, with the magic item cards, there were some cards that had reused, like, alternate art. So I'm curious, when we get to, like, dragon wormlings, are they going to each have their own unique art, or is it just going to be, like, the couple that have their own art do, and the others are, like, a stock art? Or are they only going to have the couple that have their own art? Because um, some creatures are missing. The box says 177 durable laminated cards. I pulled up the the list in the Dungeon Master's Guide and started counting. There's around 300 uh, entries between uh, Challenge 0 and 5, so not everything's in there. So we're also going to be uh, finding out, I guess, what's in here, but let's start actually doing so. You have the box, of course. And um, I'm really curious because, you know, there's cards like normal, but this looks like it's a double card, and so I've been wanting to see how this box is laid out. Because I am quite... Okay, okay, so it is. Alright, so we have... Two little packs that are single cards, and then one that is actually double-sized cards. Wow. Okay, so that that's cool. Interesting. Um, I guess... Well, we'll start with the small ones and then the big ones, but let's take the pack plastic off. All right. So, got this scored. Let's find out what's actually in here. So, uh, okay, and they do have the artist credit on the bottom there, because I guess a lot of these are obviously different artists. Um, which is also a cool way to find out which artist from whatever the Monster Manual's list did which pieces, so that's kind of cool. Um, anyways, uh, let's take care of to start with. If you flip it over, get an idea for how this is laid out. Um, okay, so you get Monster Manual, page, challenge rating, with experience, um, name, medium, humanoid, air, kukra, neutral good. Okay. Uh, AC, HP, speed, stats, um, skills, senses, language, special uh, attack. You got animated armor. Oh, okay. Because these are the same type of cards as all the others. It's like, oh, gotta break that lamination, or they're gonna stick together terribly. So, yeah, it's very much a. Uh, Get an idea for. I try to get into the focus area and not in the glare. <laughs> so, yeah, basically your actions, senses, perception. Yeah, laid out fairly similar similarly um, to the monster manual. So. Should be easy enough to, to to work with. These are okay. So some of these are even on the small cards. Still have to be flipped this way. Now on these ones, they still spat it out that way. Okay, because these ones have the art like that, so you get somewhere the art is. Uh, right. Okay. Um. That 
might answer the question about the art. Because I don't believe there were two pieces of art. No. In this page on the book, at least, there's just Bugbear Chief and Bugbear with just this piece of art. So, I mean, this may have been from something else, of course. Um, maybe one of the, like, modules or something had another Bugbear art, and they took that for it, but still, um, they have that there, so that's, that is cool. Uh, the Bullet, Bullywug, Carrion Crawler, Centaur, Cockatrice. Definitely an immediate uh, observation is I'm not seeing a lot of animals. So that's where a lot of the really low level um, CR creatures got removed, just probably from the animal bit. Okay, now Ghoul and Ghast, which are on the same page and only have one piece of art, do both use the same art here. So not everything got its own. <laughs> Okay, but then we have, again, another one, the Null, but I do not recognize Null Packhorn. This feels like a piece of art from, you know, something. But double checked, and whatever it's from is not uh, the Monster Man. But of course, they have, you know, all the different stats in there, but now they have given unique art to each one on here, so that's cool. Uh, that one I think is in one of those. So yeah, just kind of taking a look at what creatures made the cut. There's another one. We get a Hobgoblin Captain. And uh, push from there, we switch to this other little deck. And I am thinking, to a large extent, this could definitely help with just more, both adventure prep and especially like adventure prep where you're not strictly um, sure what they're they're going to come across. Here's another one where they double used art. You know, just sort of having a few things set to the side for, like, random uh, encounters. Okay, so Warchief got its own, but Orc Eye of Grumsh used the basic art. Um, yeah, if you're just doing random encounters and that, much easier, I am... Okay, I don't at all recognize the... I mean, I know the Remoraz, but I did not recognize the young Remoraz also. That's new at all. But yeah, just essentially, if you have random encounters, just being able to have a quick card that you pull up can definitely make that easier, I would be quite sure. Um, this also breaks away some of the... some of the monsters that, you know... Minotaur Skeleton is just on the skeleton page. But it's broken out to its own card here, so, you know, maybe some of the smaller ones that you don't think of as much might uh, come across your mind a little more. So that's all the normal size cards. But this box also had oversized cards. So let's take a look at these as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing these are based on the amount of information that needed to be on the back of the card. <laughs> to come up with a whole new way to <laughs> do that. Um, 
Uh, let's break the second half because, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Really good smothering. And, I mean, I guess to a large extent, yeah. Because some cards may still end up with things that have to go on to further pages. But, um... I'm going to try and kind of see if I can find one that does. It's definitely things that would have on some others had to do that. Uh, are not looking to have to do so here. Wasn't... A lot of these are like just barely onto a second part of the card, but basically, I feel like that's like an art from an older edition, maybe even that they pulled to give a monster art. Um, but almost like maybe they did these oversized cards. To prevent from having to go to uh, secondary cards at all, and uh, I'll say I appreciate it. It's a cat. Furry dragon has all the different colors on one here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let me just check if that's everything. <laughs> and yeah, as far as I can tell, that one, which is the closest to um, going over so far, still managed to fit it all on there. B. Still wondering if. We're gonna get to one that won't. <laughs> um, although I am, uh, because obviously they're, you know, they went back in the alphabet again. But one of the things that I then noticed, uh, so I don't believe, well, I guess technically, I, I we haven't seen dragons yet. Is my my thought right at this point? <laughs> it's like. But also, I'm like, where are we in the alphabet? <laughs> that looks slightly different than the art I recognize. Um, but some of, some of that is going to come just down to me not having perfect recognition of all the art. So far, uh, I'll tell you, as I'm basically I'm taking each one of these, and I'm just flipping them over over here, and uh, I have not seen one that has told you to have to continue. We've had that issue with, uh, of course, some spell, some of the longer spells on spell cards. We have that issue with uh, some of the magic items. They uh, do not to appear to have done that with these. Now, I'm sure eventually, like maybe in the higher level ones, they do. Maybe that's why they did not include the dragons. Because maybe the dragons would have. Maybe it's only, they only included the ones that they could fit. That is also unique art, but that feels like art from one of the adventure paths. Um, yeah, so we've gotten a, a look at what creature, what monsters are actually included as opposed to just knowing 177 of the monsters within that range. Um, you got to see that. And also, yeah, uh, any cards where it would not fit on a single card, uh, like any monster stat box that wouldn't fit on a single card, they moved to double cards, and they all fit. So unlike some of the other decks that Game of Fortune has done, these ones don't have, like, just to be continued, actually see the book. Although they do all reference the book. For one, none of them have the um, the paragraphs of fluff, of information, of, you know, that kind of thing. 
Uh, it's just the game stats. But really, the game stats are mostly what you're going to need just to pull randomly during the game. Uh, and none of them have that truncated. So I am impressed. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't expect that. Um, uh, although things like we did not get uh, the... Even, like, the dragon wormlings, which this is 0 to 5, and a lot of the wormlings are, like, 2 or 3 challenge ratings, so they, they would have fit in here. Uh, we also didn't get much in the way of animals. I, uh... So I'm hopeful that we'll get, you know... Uh, Bay, I guess, basically saying, I do enjoy these, I'm probably going to get the other set that I didn't get, and I'm hopeful they do more that have more of the things both, you know, from... Uh, the rest of the this challenge rating stuff, uh, as well as actually going all the way up, um, and perhaps some of the other books, uh, Volos or Warding Kynans. Um because yeah, that uh, obviously I haven't gotten to sit down at the table and use them in practice, but in general, it looks like it should again make it where less me sitting there because I record my sessions now and I'll sit there and I'll edit. And I'll just notice myself like like this, and sometimes I literally, like I'm watching myself, and I'm like, I am holding open two books to certain pages, and also trying to keep my players from noticing what's on them at the same time. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I mean, obviously the idea is, on this, you, you know, if it's a secret, this is going to make things a little more difficult, but all you really have to do is get a dummy card and put it behind it. And they're like, oh, am we fighting a banshee? Well, the rug comes up from the ground. Now, you can keep it hidden with just one of the other cards. But also the idea is, as you're doing the statistics and you're telling them what they're fighting, you don't have to try to show them the page of the book or whatever. You can literally just... It's like a rug. Something like this. <laughs> so, uh, I guess making an easy reference to just show your players what they're against. Um, I don't know. I'm just looking at it right from here. I mean, I guess technically I'm further away when uh, we do the sessions, but also even just be able to hold it up and possibly whole audience can see <laughs> what we have, because, yeah. I don't know. I'm hopeful that it'll make things easier. I'll be interested to try it. Uh, again, impressed they didn't cut anything off. Uh, I'll, of course, link below where you can check them out. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, see you next time. Bye.